Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today's project was inspired by one of my favorite pairs of shoes. <laughs> It's a pair of tennis shoes from Steve Madden and I just love all the different patterns and how well they work together. And I, ever since I got these shoes, I've tried to figure out how I would translate that design onto a tumbler and I think I got a good idea for it. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. You know you're gonna see all the products listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. And hey, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. It really, really helps us out. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we go. We're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup and I've got some fine line masking tape. Now, if you can't find fine line masking tape, which I'm gonna link below, it's easy to find on Amazon. You can also use some washi tape, but I found it didn't perform as well as this fine line tape. Um, I'm gonna start by masking off a line right down the center of our tumbler. So finding the vertical center on both sides and just putting a line down that. This is going to be the guide for our pattern. I'm calling this design freestyle pattern because you really can just freestyle it with the fine line tape. This tape is flexible enough to allow you to make curved lines, straight lines, whatever, and it's really easy to work with. So to establish the lines, I just kind of winged it. Um, I did have to make this cup twice because I had, to, <laughs> I had to strip the first one completely because it just turned out really messy. So that did help, um, obviously laying the pattern for a second time. I knew what I did and didn't want. Um, and I had kind of a clear picture of how I wanted it to look. So there's that. Um, but the two lines on either side really help me to line this up so that I can get some asymmetry on both sides. Now, this is a freestyle, so if you don't want asymmetry, you definitely don't have to go for that. The beauty of this technique is that the fine line tape lets you place stuff wherever you want and map out the design however far your imagination can take you, <laughs> okay? So... And it's really easy to reposition and stick back on if you don't like where your design is going. So I just sort of like made it up. I didn't use the actual shoe itself as a, as a guide for the pattern. But what I did know was I really wanted that holographic leopard to be front and center. I wanted that to be the largest section and kind of the star of the show. So I did try to map out a special section just for that, that I knew it would be featured from all sides of the tumbler. Uh, so I did kind of have that in mind. And also you're gonna map out your sections in the amount, in the same amount of patterns that you have. For example, if you wanted to do five different patterns or five different colors per se, you would map out five different sections in your pattern. Or maybe you have some repeats of that same color to where you map out more or less patterns, if that makes sense, okay? And I think as you guys see this come together, it's going to make more and more sense. Really what we're doing is we're just mapping out the rough draft for our pattern, all right? All right, and then once I got the uh, main part of the pattern laid out, I made sure everything was as asymmetrical as I could get it because um, I really kind of wanted, like once I started laying the pattern, I realized it's gonna look best if it is pretty asymmetrical. Um, so anyway, once we got that down, I went in and I started to trim any bits of excess tape that I didn't need. Keep in mind that this tape is probably going to stay on your tumbler for the whole, like forever. <laughs> Most of it will not come up, 
come off. Um, it's going to stay on as this is really going to be part of what shapes our design. Um, so keeping this clean and trimmed up nicely is going to provide you with better results in the end. So here I am trimming off kind of those excess lengths of tape. And then I'm also going to start to trim off that center divider line that I had laid in the beginning uh, because I don't need it for most of the sections. Um, it's not part of my design. I just laid it as a means to lay everything out symmetrically. What inspired me to use this technique for this design was I've always been obsessed with uh, like custom painters who do like motorcycle tanks and helmets and those super talented folks. Um, they lay out some of their designs in this way in like a freestyle fashion with the fine line tape. And I thought to myself, that looks really no, it doesn't look easy to do, but it can't be that hard. And it gives it gives you so much freedom with your design. And so even if you weren't doing like the same exact kind of design that I'm working on here, this is a really valuable tool and technique to map out glitter designs and all kinds of other patterns. Um, and no matter what shape the tumbler, so we wouldn't be reliant upon using a skinny straight tumbler or what have you, you could lay out these beautiful patterns on almost any kind of shape tumbler, except if you're going to be using them to lay large portions of vinyl like we're doing today, because that does not necessarily work for curvy tumblers. All right. So and now that we have that pattern laid out, I want to show you this beautiful vinyl. Oh my gosh. And would you believe that I made this all by myself? All right, so we are using silver holographic printable vinyl in my regular inkjet printer to create this holographic printed vinyl, all right? So this is the vinyl I bought. It's printable vinyl holographic, A4 size. I will link it down below in the description box. I have a Canon Pixma inkjet printer. Okay, and to print an edge to edge pattern on our vinyl, I'm gonna show you how I do this in Google Docs. Okay, so I have Google Docs open, I've got a blank sheet open, we're gonna to go to file, page setup, we're gonna set the page size to A4, because that's the size of our holographic vinyl sheets. And then we're going to change the page margins to all zeros. Okay, and by doing this, this will allow us to print edge to edge. If you're using Microsoft Word, it's the same kind of deal, okay? Then I'm gonna go to insert image, upload from computer. I've already got my image saved to my desktop, so it's easy to find. I literally just Googled leopard print iPhone wallpaper, and this is what I found, okay? And so we're just gonna get this on our sheet here and it's already sized to fill the sheet but if you needed to resize this you definitely could to make sure that it goes edge to edge or to at least ensure that you have enough to wrap around your cup or the section that you're wanting to fill okay so once we've got that all taken care of um we are going to make sure that we select the appropriate print settings to make sure that we can print uh, properly on our printable vinyl. So I'm going to go to print. And then when we go to print, if you guys are using Google Docs, you want to click on that little drop down menu there. I think it says like more options or more settings. You want to click on that and you need to make sure that the paper size here is set to A4. Um, so a lot of times when you guys run into issues with it not printing edge to edge, it's because we didn't change the settings in the print window here as well, okay? So we're gonna go all the way down to print using manufacturing settings, and you're gonna go to preferences. You wanna make sure this is set to photo printing. And for the paper type, I just selected semi-gloss. Again, make sure we select A4 size paper and the print, uh, print quality should be high. Your settings will look a little bit different depending on your printer, but either way, you want to optimize those print settings. Okay, so here we are printing out of my Canon PIXMA MX922 inkjet printer. 
We do not need to seal this, all right? It takes just a few seconds to dry and it's ready to be applied to our cup, all right? So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna start on sectioning out our pattern. I'm gonna start sectioning the gold textured vinyl first. This is a textured gold vinyl that um, I got from Cricut. You can find it on Amazon or at Hobby Lobby. And we're just going to do this like we would a vinyl wrap. So I've already cut enough to make sure that I have enough to cover this section. And we're gonna cover the section that we masked off when we mapped out our pattern with that fine line tape, okay? So we're gonna make sure we have enough to go over that section that we mapped out with our fine line tape. We're gonna cut off the overlapping excess here with our scissors. And then I'm going to come in with my craft knife. Make sure you got a sharp one. And we are going to use the creases that naturally occur from that tape below as a guide for where we're going to trim out that pattern. This is especially difficult when we have this uh, textured vinyl because it's hard to see the seams, especially with that metallic, like you have to get it in the right light. I'm not gonna lie, this was a real challenge for me, okay? Um, so it helps if you're not in super bright light because you'll be able to see more shadows, um, but just take your time with this. The success of your freestyle pattern will definitely <laughs> rely on you being accurate with these cuts. Um, again, you guys, this is not a beginner tutorial. This is going to be a little bit more of an advanced technique. I did have to completely scrap the first version of this cup that I did. Um, it just was really hard. Um, and this particular section took me two tries. So I... I edited the, <laughs> the mess ups out, but please believe I did have some mess ups um, or I didn't cut very accurately, um, but it is doable, all right? And I think you guys can kind of get the picture of how this works um, from watching the video here. You know, you just cut along that indented line that's created from the fine line tape that we put below. All right, that's it. Um, and we just repeat that for each pattern section. Now, I do want to say it's really important that if you're using a similar variety of vinyls that I am, that you start with your textured or thicker vinyls first and end with your thinner printed or patterned vinyls last. So if you're using printed vinyl or you're using holographic vinyl, or something that's a little more flimsy, make sure you do that last. These textured vinyls are really bulky and durable, so they can withstand having other things laid over them and ripped off. Um, so just keep that in mind. You also want to make sure that you um, save any kind of like painting or glitter that you need to do for the very end. Um, because having glitter on there first and then trying to lay vinyl later, it just gets really messy in my experience, okay? Um, if it helps you to run a pen along those tape lines, that might help you, um, you know, get them a little more visible as well. Uh, but... <sighs> This one was still kind of hard. It's a lot easier with thinner vinyl. So if you want to forego this textured vinyl altogether, I don't blame you because <laughs> it was really a pain. Okay, so moving on to this printed holographic vinyl, we're going to use it just like we would any other pattern vinyl. I absolutely love this printed holographic vinyl because we don't have to seal it. And it's pretty durable, you guys. It will not withstand sharp objects, though. So you can scratch it, so be careful with that. Like you don't want your ring to graze over it or your knife or your scissors or something because it is kind of delicate in that way. It also can't withstand tape being placed over it or other vinyls. So you definitely wanna lay this after you lay all other surrounding vinyl sections, if that makes sense, all right? It's also kind of thick. So if you wanted to cut this with your Cricut, you need to cut it on the light cardstock setting. And, and, and that's, I mean, I, trust me, I tried cutting this with like several <laughs> 
cut settings for other projects and light cardstock was the best because this sucker is really thick okay so here we are again we just lay it over that taped off section and then trim off the excess being careful not to rip up that gold vinyl Okay, and we're just continuing on um, doing the same thing. I know this looks really tedious, but I actually got all the vinyl laid in under 20 minutes. Okay, um, and this top triangle, I used like a glitter adhesive vinyl, which was a waste of my time because it didn't sparkle under epoxy. <laughs> so I could have just used regular black vinyl, but whatever. Um, this holographic vinyl looks absolutely beautiful with this type of application. I love all the different textures that we're creating here and the contrast between textures. When you get to this top rim here, you want to trim off the excess just like we would any other vinyl wrapped uh, tumbler here. And be very mindful of that yellow masking tape. Make sure you trim off enough of it so it's not peeking through. Um, in the very end. You also don't want to be reliant on the vinyl lines that we'll be laying down later uh, to cover up that yellow masking. You really want to try and cut accurately to make sure that your lines between sections don't get too large. Once I got all my vinyl laid, I was ready to start on my painted sections. So I just masked off um, my... Uh, vinyls here using saran wrap you do not want to use tape to mask off this printed holographic vinyl because it could rip up your ink so i just used some regular costco you know food wrap to pull press and seal around the remainder of my tumbler to mask off all those vinyl sections and we're going to spray paint the bottom white I was dry I decided to paint the center section Naples yellow this is the premium acrylic paint from Arteza I'll have it linked down below and I just hand painted this section and I didn't mask it off or anything the reason that I use this uh, acrylic instead of just some spray paint is this was a very specific color that I needed and I don't have a spray paint the same color I did use a kind of moist or wet brush um, and that helps to get smoother coverage on your paint. You're not going to really see the brush strokes uh, through your epoxy, but you do want to get a solid two or three coats of coverage on here to make sure you get solid color. I also wanted to do a hand painted section for this color because on the shoe, this section that I'm painting now is actually like a hair. It's like a hairy patterned fabric on the shoe. <laughs> so to kind of match that same texture, I actually did want some of my brush strokes to show, um, but I did want it to resemble a different texture than the rest of my vinyl that I have in this design. All right, and after all that paint dries, I'm going to hand paint these funky cheetah slash leopard spots. I don't know what you would call these um, to resemble the same spots that we have on that section on the shoe. So you guys can kind of see what I meant by that like textured hairy fabric. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're just going to hand draw them in and uh, no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just I'm just letting it ride and trying to get it to resemble the pattern on the shoe as much as possible, which is kind of a weird pattern, but whatever. All right, and then I also did the same for those like weird small spots on the white section. All right, and then once we were done painting all those spots, I was ready to seal all this in. Now, you don't necessarily have to seal this before epoxy, but I would highly recommend it because that was a whole lot of work. And we just wanna make sure everything's protected. So of course, I'm gonna use Quick Coat. This is a urethane sealer. This does not take the place of epoxy. And you can find it at countercultureDIY.com. This is just going to help seal everything down. There is a lot of goings on. <laughs> <laughs> with this cup and this is just going to seal any like contaminants 
or anything that will prevent us from getting a smoother coat over it. So I'm just going to apply this directly to my cup using a silicone makeup brush. And you wanna have it on your turner and you wanna make sure that this is a thin coat. And we also want to apply it to the entire cup because not only does this seal in our vinyl, but it seals in any contaminants that again, will prevent us from getting a smooth epoxy coat. This stuff saves me a lot of time. 10 out of 10 would recommend, and it has a built-in UV stabilizer. So it's gonna keep your projects looking beautiful for a really long time. We're gonna let this dry for about 30 to 45 minutes before we move on to our first coat of epoxy. Right, so for my first coat, of epoxy I've got 30 milliliters mixed of Alumalite's Amazing Quick Coat. This is their fast setting epoxy. I'm just going to apply it to my cup like I normally would and after we apply this coat of epoxy I'm going to let it dry for about two to three hours and then I will go right back over it with a second coat. My second coat will also be a fast setting epoxy because I do not have a lot of time this week. <laughs> I'm going to let that second coat dry for about four to six hours before we move on to the next step. All right, and so now that my cup's been drying for about six hours with that fast setting epoxy, I'm ready to start on my sanding. Keep in mind that depending on the type of epoxy that you're using, you're going to get different dry times than I would, okay? And as usual, we're just going to sand around the top rim, exposing that fine line of stainless steel that we're always looking for to establish the final seal with our final coats of epoxy on the outer rim of the cup rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm also going to sand any kind of like lifts or ridges that occurred in the design process. Some of the edges of that vinyl came up a little bit um, or was a little bit thick. So we just kind of sand those down the best that we can, keeping in mind to not stand too far down to where we would damage our vinyl. All right, and once we're all done with our sanding, I'm gonna take this in and rinse it off with some dish soap and water, dry it off with some paper towels, and now we are ready to work on our vinyl lines. I've already cut my vinyl lines in Cricut Design Space using the shapes feature. I cut a square at 11.5 inches wide by 0.15 inches tall. That's the size for the black lines. And I created the holographic lines that we'll place next to it at 11.5 inches wide by 0.08 inches tall, okay? Um, and that's how we, we cut those. And I made the black ones with regular permanent vinyl, and then the holographic ones were made with a uh, holographic vinyl that I will have linked down below that I got from Amazon. You'd be really surprised how well this vinyl will curve with the curves of your design. Uh, and I just think that it really sets off this design, cleans everything up nicely, and hides all of that fine line tape that might have, you know, been exposed below. Uh, so this is just going to pull it all together. And the reason why I'm doing two different kinds of lines is because some of my lines, uh, that I needed to cover were a little thicker than the 0.15. And I didn't want to make my vinyl lines any thicker than 0.15 because they would have a harder time uh, getting smooth along some of those curved portions of the design, if that makes sense, okay? So instead of just making those black lines thicker, I added another thinner line with an accenting color to kind of fill in any kind of gaps that I would have still had because we're using this to clean up all those messy lines that were left uh, when we did the trimming process in our freestyle pattern. Okay, so we're just going to hand lay all of these. It's a little bit tedious, <laughs> but completely worth it. Okay, and then once we've got all our vinyl lines placed, we are going to seal our vinyl once again using that quick coat product that we talked about earlier. Okay, so here we are again with another layer of quick coat. And what this is going to do is again, just seal in all that vinyl and any nasty contaminants that might prevent us from getting a nice smooth vinyl coat. So I'm gonna apply this all over again using my silicone brush. I'm gonna let it dry for 30 to 45 minutes. And then we are going to apply our final coats of epoxy. <gasps> 
finally, <laughs> for those of you who have stuck around through this whole video, thank you so much. Again, I know this is not a beginner video. This is definitely an advanced technique, um, but I like to serve all skill levels on our channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you make a pattern, freestyle pattern situation yourself, please be sure to tag us on social media so we can check it out. Thank you so much and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.